What's going on, everyone? Welcome to the Innovators Den. I am your host, Danny Silverio, at formerly known as Hashtag on Instagram. I'm here with Steve All Business, and we got the special Andre Taylor. Oh, it's great to be here. Yeah, so now we're getting started on a new segment. Uh, I was inspired by Andre's work because I was in the process of starting my brand and I was lo looking for the right information and I, I stumbled upon Andre's work and from there on it's just been inspiring because it's been like he's given me a step-to-step -step road to like really mm -hmm. able to communicate and tell the story of my brand the right way. So I appreciate you, Andre, putting your insight on YouTube and creating uh, the opportunity for us to to, to learn from you this is a great treat for me because i had no idea about your brand i knew about the podcast and and then i saw the, the digital the advertising firm the, the promotions that you're doing but to learn about the brand and and now to learn about playing some role in in that rolling out that's very exciting it's, it's amazing how when you're online you touch so many people and you don't even realize. It. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's been a journey with the innovators then because that's what we were talking about earlier with Danny. Like we had the marketing company and then, you know, we was always behind closed doors. Yeah. Right. So then now it's like, let's put the podcast and we have reached so many people reaching out to us now from all over the world. It's incredible. So to have you, it's an honor. Um, I think we should just get started today. Danny, what's up? No, it's a, it, it really has been amazing. I think that we estimated that we were going to touch people, mm -hmm. but not in, in like the pace that we're, we're, we're reaching and like the growth that we've had so far in the show. And it, we just have had so many amazing guests that I think that a mastermind or some sort of like networking event is, is in order. Just Now, I want to ask you, do you know why you've touched so many people? I have a theory. No, no, no. I, I would love to hear you. <laughs> why do you think you've touched so many people? Uh, I feel because we, we, we took the time to curate uh, an idea, a brand, a consistency level of always being over delivering on our production side, our location side, our partners. And I think people's taking notice of that. Mm -hmm. I also think that like the way that you treat people is mm -hmm. important, right? Yeah. So like that adds value. Like we are not just going to um, have someone here and like treat them a certain way. We deliver exactly what we say we're going to deliver. I think what's interesting to me is you commented a few moments before we got, we got started about the idea of, in my case, a person of color talking about luxury. Right. And seeing that and that having an impact on you. And I hear that all the time. You know, I'm probably hearing from people in over 60 countries about my content and about how they're using it, how, they've in, how it's impacted their business. And the reality is that today, people go online not only for information and entertainment, but to see themselves reflected. Right. And what's interesting to me is how, in particular, young people, and I, I guess I'm old enough to be able to say young people here. <laughs> but I don't want to sound like an old guy here. But younger than me, you know, you're, you're looking at younger people giving advice and giving insight and telling their story. When I was getting into business, the only options were older people. And I still believe that that's important. You have to look at young and old and you have to look at different kinds of experience. But I think what's happening now is we're in the age of uh, Bitcoin, sneaker culture. Mm -hmm. And when you go online and you see guys like you talking about business and innovation and advertising, that gets their attention. And so I applaud you for what you're doing because it is uh, very exciting to see this kind of content and this kind of energy coming out of, uh, out of your podcast. Oh, thank thank you. you so much. That's a pleasure to, to hear that. Yeah, it's all new to us. <laughs> it's all new to us. And, and it's an experience that I think is the journey. Like people see success as a place and it's to us as a journey. Right. And we're going through it right now uh, as we develop uh, our ideas. We have a lot of ideas. That's why we called it the innovators then because we have several companies right now that we have ready to, to launch mm -hmm. and we're working with different partners. But ultimately here, we're here with Andre Taylor today. Andre, what inspired you to go into the luxury space? Well, you, you know, we're, we're taping today in Brooklyn and I grew up in Brooklyn. I grew up in Crown Heights. In nice. Interesting yeah. about that is I grew up in this house that was, townhouse that was built in the 1800s. 
14 room house, spectacular architecture. And at the time when my parents bought that place, I think in 59 or so, it was not completely out of reach for a young couple to get a house like that. Right. Today, that's you know, yeah. right. you know, incredible. But, and so I grew up in this magnificent space and my father died when I was young, uh, four years old, and my mother really decorated the space with a lot of enthusiasm. She would go to all kinds of furniture stores and thrift stores and all sorts of things. And so she, she kind of built this magnificence in the house. And I was always fascinated by that. Amazing. Because a lot of times I would be with her. And so what I realized in growing up is that I was really getting a tutorial on luxury lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And not only luxury lifestyle in terms of brand names, which we'll talk more about, mm -hmm. but how does one make that part of their life to elevate their life, to live a better life, to engage better, to, to fulfill their potential, to connect with others in a better way, to give your family a great experience. So I, had a, I, 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 went, I was on Wall Street for a long time. I left there, started my own sports media company, built that over time. And while I was in sports, I started to see that many of the sports teams were organizing their efforts to cater to more affluent fans. Mm. And everything from season ticket licenses mm. to um, private suites to special fan levels and all sorts of things. You know, these businesses were mom and pop businesses and they began to grow them into more corporate businesses. Mm -hmm. and, and the key was that income was rising and not only that, the desire to have more in your life and the belief that you could was rising. Mm -hmm. And so in the 90s, that was happening. And in 2000, I started a consulting company and I said, when I move on from the sports company, I'm going to really focus on luxury because I feel something happening here. Right. And I began to do that in 2000. And it was things like customer service, things like selling effectively, things like, um, serving the client in a major way. But as I started to do this, I began to realize a couple of things. One is that the luxury industry was getting older and they were disconnected from the younger audience. Right. And they, lot, many of them weren't even online yet. Second, I began to realize that most people, when they think of luxury, they think of a few brands. Right. Mm -hmm. But there are tens of thousands of brands around the world that from the client's perspective are luxury because they're treating the client right. And so I started to see this emergence of new entrepreneurial type brands, the industry getting older, technology coming into play, and I begin to feel like, wow, there is a place here for a different kind of consulting and perspective. Yes. So what would you say like, it are the, the keys to start something like luxury? General a luxury brand? brand? Yes. Well, I think, I think that this is the thing that's interesting today. There was a time where the brand had to come out of a certain place. It had to come out of a certain... Heritage. heritage. Yeah, heritage. Uh, they call it provenance in, in, in luxury. But today, it's really about putting together the right elements so that you can credibly tell that client or that customer that they're having a luxury experience. So yes, you do want something that's rare and exclusive. You want to have some origin story. You want quality. You want uh, customization. You want delivery at a certain level. You want something that is clearly above. Uh, you want rarity. You want all these things. But what's happened today is a lot of that has been diluted because people just put the word luxury on it. Right. Mm -hmm. So part of my work is helping entrepreneurs in particular understand, yeah, you can play in this world, but you must have a methodology and a map to do that. Mm -hmm. You can't just say luxury just because you want to say luxury. Mm -hmm. Right. Have some, some reasoning behind that, right. some yeah. strategy behind that. Because ultimately, there's going to be someone else saying luxury. There's going to be a competitor. Mm -hmm. And you have to be able to distinguish between what you offer and what that competitor offers. 
And how will you curate that story? Though? Like, let's say we have all those factors that you mentioned, but mm -hmm. how will we curate that story then? Well, story is very important. And so when you are developing a luxury brand, one of the things I work with in particular is what's the reasoning behind it? Who does it serve? Uh, what is the impact on the client, the person who buys the product? What is the quality of what you're doing? What kind of craftsmanship goes into it? How long did you spend uh, deciding to go in that direction? And how do you maintain that level of focus? All of these things are important because you're selling to somebody right. who is going to be telling their wife, their husband, their child, their friend, their coworker, mm -hmm. hey, look what I bought. Yeah. And you got to give them a story to go along with that. Now, if you're, if you're, if, if you've got a Rolls Royce, you don't have to explain it. Right. If you, if you've got certain names, you don't have to explain say it. It's like the LVMH's kind of like. Well, the, the interest, the interesting thing about LVMH is they recognized very early on that a lot of these businesses were shopkeeper businesses that had developed great client relationships and great mm -hmm. brands, but they were not great businesses. Right. And by bringing them together under one brand, I think there's something like 75 brands now, it's that massive. they could develop a powerhouse and they can actually share resources and methodology and marketing and strategy in that group. Mm -hmm. What's interesting about that to me is that, first of all, Arno developed that is, is, you know, if not, he might not be the richest today, but he may be tomorrow because it flips mm -hmm. back and forth. Right. But that opportunity exists elsewhere with many other brands. The difference is the, the capital, the discipline, the understanding, the, all of those things which many entrepreneurs lack. And it's unfortunate because mm -hmm. there could be many, many more brands. Uh, but a lot, of the, a lot of entrepreneurs who develop brands don't really have the vision and the stamina uh, in the pocketbook to, to right. push forward in the way that they could. You mentioned um, discipline. Can you speak on that a little bit? Because I don't think that people understand the amount of discipline that it takes to create a brand or run a business or just like the hurdles of like... Well, luxury and itself is, is, has to do with a certain discipline of craftsmanship, uh, a level of customer service, attention to detail, and all these factors. So, yeah. What's discipline is uh, perhaps the not-so-secret ingredient in everyone's success. Right. Uh, when you see any successful person, any powerful person, any person that's had an impact, they didn't just get up that morning and decide they're going to do it. They've been at this for a long time. Mm -hmm. you know, I've been in this business more than 21 plus years, maybe 23 years or so. Um, and prior to that, I was in business. Prior to that, I was developing businesses and learning businesses. Mm -hmm. And when I tell you that I work every day, now I, I love what I do. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like work. Right. But you know, I'm working every day. I'm studying every day. I'm talking mm -hmm. to clients every day. I'm figuring out strategy every day. I'm carrying my notes every day to see if I can just get an edge, if I can learn something, see something, use something that will be powerful. You talked about the 21 essentials of of a luxury that I had online, which, believe it or not, that video is 10 years old. But it was so current. Yeah, yeah. Well, all of this is, <laughs> there's nothing new. It's so current, the information. There's nothing new, yeah. believe it or not. That's the, thing that's, that's the thing that most people don't really understand. There's really nothing new. But <laughs> it, what's new is how you execute it. Mm. Right. What's new is, is how you make it relevant to now. But that video, for example, I decided to record it one day when I was, I was actually at a studio with my videographer. And she said, what are, what are we going to record today? Because normally I would come in, I'd record several videos. And, and uh, I said, you know, I don't know what I'm going to do. And I looked at my laptop and I saw that I had this presentation from uh, my selling luxury workshop that I was giving around the world, actually. Mm. Workshops all over the place. And I said, well, maybe I'll record this. And so I recorded that, and I was shocked at the response after I recorded that. I had people calling me from brands all around the world. Uh, some people were using it every day mm -hmm. 
to train <laughs> their sales staff and to reinforce certain things. And to this day, it's one of my most popular videos out there. Can you uh, speak a little bit on it for us that well, haven't watched it? Well, the, um, you haven't watched it. Man. <laughs> the, uh, I have it on repeat. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be sure to watch it after this. It, it, it is, it's essentially what I did. Is I took some of the essentials of what it means to sell luxury and I, and I condensed it into about a 15 minute video. So. And so things like sense of theater, being able to describe the, the, the product or service in a way that, yes, that has a lot of impact. In fact, I should ask you, what are some of the, the uh, 21 essentials? Well, the 21 essentials, I feel he's breaking down the information on it's not just a uh, high quality uh, fabric or certain material is also a lifestyle and it's also a point of view like he said lifestyle doesn't just need to be all like all bourgeois it could be spartan right it could be very rigid but luxury is it's a point of view so in the 21 essentials he he breaks that down and it helps not only like a sales rep at a luxury store learn how to communicate with the customer if the customer gets aggravated you need to calm them down and bring them in a place that they feel welcome to the store you know so like for me it's just like a, a map right because you know what we're working on and he just really helped me like put my mind in a place that I need to take myself out and then create a space create a story create an idea around the brand so when people get introduced to it whether it's through online right we able to provide customer service right give a returns if we do shipping for free or you know these are part of the luxury experiences that people get, uh, the packaging when they get their, their, their products. So he breaks those down into different bullet points that if you're going into the le luxury sector, you need to watch Andre Taylor. <laughs> That's all I got to say. Well, the, the other thing I would say that, that really is the key to it is my approach differs in that I'm very focused on the psychology of luxury, right. the psychology of the client. Everyone is into the stuff the things, right. the, and, and so if you ask the average person, if I, and I tell people I'm in luxury, oh, what brand do you work with, you know, mm -hmm. right? And that's, a, that's significant, but more important is what psychology do you serve? Right. Because the person that drives a Maserati is different than the person that drives a Jaguar. And a Honda. And, 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 and a Honda, of course. But, but, but even within the luxury categories, mm -hmm. there are different different psychologies. Yeah. So what I try to do is help uh, my clients understand that once you get the psychology of the client, then you can shape your business in a way that responds to that client, and that client will be captive to you. When you look at, if we take other industries, like Beyonce's you know, traveling and Taylor Swift is out there, the songs are great, but there's something else that fans are responding to. Mm -hmm. right. They're responding to a psychology. She understands me. Right. I'm like her. I want to be like her. Mm -hmm. I, I like the way this makes me feel. No different. Really? No different. So if, you, if you're going to spend $500 for a ticket, 1000 for a ticket, or whatever, you're going you're gonna to convince yourself that that's cool that, yeah, that's be, and because of some psychology. Well, that's where you need to be as a, as a luxury marketer, in any marketer, frankly. Right. Because you're communicating like the, the, affluent, the affluent customer, right? And how do they want to be? Uh, they want to be sold. The affluent consumer wants to be sold on a point of view, on a lifestyle, so they can feel like... Well, that's my point of view too, correct? It is, it is interesting how some of the most basic psychological things are often missed. Uh, I remember I was going to a meeting and uh, a car picked me up with other, a couple of other people who were going into the meeting and one of the guys in the car was this powerful business guy and he was talking with the person who was driving, whatever. And, and we were going to like a luncheon and I really didn't introduce myself like in, in the car because they, they were in, in conversation. Right. So about 15 minutes in, the, the person who picked us up said, oh, wait a minute, Andre, we didn't even ask 
you know, anything about you, right? And the powerful, experienced businessman next to me, he said, he said to me, uh, finally, you were waiting for that, weren't you? And what he was really saying is, look, anybody who has accomplished anything, they're hoping that other people know it. They're hoping that other people understand it. And they want to understand it themselves and be reminded of it. Now, maybe they don't need it on blast all the time. Mm -hmm. But there's a certain level of recognition that they want to receive because it's hard. Mm -hmm. It's hard to do this stuff. We yeah. talked about discipline. you got to get up early in the morning. You, you're on calls. You're, Late nights. you're proposing something. People don't respond. People say no. You think you're going to get the deal. You don't get the deal. So when you slay those dragons, you want to really feel good about that. And it's nice when other people know. Totally. Right. So when you're selling to the affluent, you're dealing with successful people, company owners, professionals. People have accomplished something in their life. And they want, if they want to know when they're in that suite, in that hotel, yeah, you know what? I deserve this. I worked right. hard for this and I did this. And they certainly want the people who are selling to them to understand that and to connect with that. And it's one of the secrets in doing that well. A lot of times I'm, I'm coaching some of these luxury sales advisors and I say, you gotta become bigger. No, this isn't about being subservient. This isn't about being intimidated. This is about being just as powerful as that person is in a different way. Right, as a, as a servant, in a way that you say like- Well, you can be of service without being subservient. Correct. That's what I meant to say. So <laughs> if you go to an affluent person's house and, and they say, Steve, do you want a drink? Steve, do you, you, yeah. hey, you want something? Let, let, bring him something, man. Let's get him something nice. That person is being of service. Right. Because you're in their domain. Right. But they're not subservient. Got it. But sense. what they're saying at that moment is, let's treat this person a certain way. This person's connected to me. This person's in my space. This person is... Let's treat them a certain way. And that is one of the keys to being really successful in this, in this segment. That's amazing. What would you say is like has changed in, in, in the industry trends as far as like uh, luxury and now mixing, the mixing of like streetwear culture within luxury? Well, you, you're putting your finger on it. One of the big things is that, first of all, the age of the luxury consumer, the point at which that person believes that they should have luxury, I mean, if you, if you look at some old television programming, what you'll see is people in their 40s and 50s and 60s at a certain level in life. You go on Instagram or you go online, you see young people feeling, hey, I, I can travel to this country. I can live at this level. So that's age is one issue. The other thing is culture. So when we talked about street culture, mm -hmm. uh, street wares, which is one of the big categories. And that's a big difference. So you're looking at people who are talking about luxury and you may not see it right away because there isn't a big, you know, isn't it a blue blazer fabric or a gray flannel pants or mm -hmm. a pencil skirt. It's not the tradition that you see, but it is luxury because it is positioned that way. So culture is a big issue and that has opened up opportunity and it also has created a lot of competitive tension because mm -hmm. what that means now is that uh, someone can create a brand by making it cool on the street and compete with a big brand. Correct. Now, if they're really savvy, they can grow it Discipline is, is an issue. Capital is an issue. Right. Uh, client. And, and the other thing I would say is a big difference is technology. Technology has enabled a lot, and it has also been a barrier for some. Because in the past, the, the sales advisor would call you up and say, your ties are in. Your, your, the shoes you wanted have come in. Mm -hmm. Now we're, we're communicating via, via text and all of these things. Mm -hmm. So this, the feeling 
of being uh, treated at a very high level, it feels no different than someone else texting you. Yeah. And, and I think that More that pressure. is one of the gaps and opportunities for emerging brands to understand that really doing well at luxury is more than just being digital, it's being holistic. Right. It, it's, it's looking at your business in a complete way and saying, we'll deliver this to you, or we'll be right there, or picking up the phone and calling someone, or inviting your client to mm. an event, or it's, it's being with them at, at a different level. Now, what would you say, like, someone, one of the viewers wanted to create a brand, what would you say, like, are five keys that you would tell them to start? I think the key to both starting a brand and actually getting into the luxury consulting branding business is to get an understanding of a client, get an understanding of an audience. Most people start by thinking about a product. Hey, here's a cool design, here's a cool logo, here's a cool thing I want to do. And they miss almost entirely the, the person that they're selling to. And often they don't know who they're selling to. Sometimes I'm talking to a brand and I'll say, who is your client? They don't know. Market mm. analysis. They don't know. And they're, yes, market analysis, but I would say down to the person. Down to the person. You know, you know this person likes this. This person behaves this way. Got this person behaviors. cares about this. Mm -hmm. This person does this. Build that whole persona before you right. actually launch it. Right. Got it. Because today you can, you can market to just about anybody. Mm -hmm. right? So if you wanted to market to people who do certain things on Sunday morning, you could find them. Yeah. You could say, do you, do you watch political shows on Sunday morning? Right. You could find them. Right. Do you jog Sunday morning? Do you go to church Sunday morning? You know, you, could, you can pinpoint that person. So I think on all levels, understanding the audience is the big gap for many brands. And uh, today, we've got the technology to do it. Mm -hmm. That's the thing that's fascinating. You can follow that person around everywhere they go technologically. Mm -hmm. But you've got to take it a step further by really endearing yourself and really getting connected to them in a real way. Right. Sometimes I talk to people and I'll, uh, they'll follow up with me, I'll talk to them, or they'll contact me and I'll, I'll follow up with them. And I'll say, hey, follow up with me. Talk to me, let me know what's going on. You know, and they don't follow up. And I'm thinking, are you kidding me? Yeah. Someone is happens quite a lot. responding to you and you don't follow up? But part of this is the, the app culture where we we're talking, but we're not talking. The, the humanity yeah, is not there as great. And I think we have to elevate that in everything right. we do. That's like, for me, you know, putting the brand together, I had to start thinking about the behavior, like you said, of the, the consumer and the lifestyle. Like when we started the brand, uh, you know, something really bad happened with one of the factories we were partnering up with. And that's what triggered us to push more to the sustainable side of things not just this calling ourselves a sustainable luxury brand mm -hmm. but also the ethics of how we produce our products mm -hmm. where we produce our products who's producing our products and not only that in the part of communicating with the customer well that is that customer into sustainability or not mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. do they eat clean or not do they like to go to a gym or not mm -hmm. okay my customer might be a person who eats clean and goes to the gym because they have a different mindset mm -hmm. you know so that that part of creating the the behavior of the consumer and f like it was very important for for me mm -hmm. because at first i just wanted to get mm -hmm. t-shirts sold at the cheapest price but then when we had that incident with that factory it just changed my mindset I, I i went through like country to country trying to find out vertical factories that were focused on sustainability for myself like it was i was i forgot about the end user i was like i need to be ethical through my process mm -hmm. so i'm confident when i'm selling the product or telling the story that i did my research and i did my homework to make sure that people are being considered when making the the product mm -hmm. you know so it's been a journey and i again i appreciate you getting on the show and and danny has been very helpful in creating that 
digital side of things of where's the consumer at online? Mm -hmm. Where can we find them? Are they in Spain? Mm -hmm. Are they in Barcelona? Are they in Europe? Where? Mm -hmm. And he, he's helping curate that. That's, that's what I focus on. <laughs> but um, a little bit more about you, right? So can you tell like the viewers if there's like any tools of ins uh, insights that they can actually like look for insights or tools that you use to keep yourself organized or almost like five steps that they would start t tomorrow to get started? Well, I think if I were to describe my approach to business and business building, it would be uh, the first thing is I am a avid consumer of content. Uh, so not only online. I mean, I'm reading multiple newspapers every day, multiple times a day, checking in, see what's going on. And it's everything. It's not just luxury. It's all kinds of industries. I really pursue my interests. So if there's something about architecture that's cool, there's something about real estate, anything that, that's out there, uh, politics, uh, because all of those things help you cross-pollinate and help you have other ideas that you can apply mm -hmm. to your industry. So I consume a lot of information. Uh, I am I'm also capturing ideas all the time. So I'm always with something to write and something to write on, including, you know, I use my, my phone, but I always have something to write and mm -hmm. something to write on. If you were to walk with me through the streets of New York, you'd be amazed at how much uh, paper I can collect. You know, I'm looking at these magazines right now and I'm wondering, okay, what's in them? You know, because, <laughs> because I know inside there's stories, insights, information, perspective. Uh, I'm always taking photos because I, I see something that's interesting and I want to think about it and relate to it. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm pretty disciplined in my capturing and use of information. I also am very disciplined in my content production. You know, I write every day, uh, I record all the time, so I'm very focused on, on that. And I'm also high touch when it comes to my clients. I believe that, you know, you just have to stay in touch, you just have to follow up, and you have to find ways to serve them. Mm -hmm. I think you said something as far as... Um you were, you were talking about how you consume content. We had a conversation uh, with some students in Youth Build, and we were just uh, telling them, like, if you're going to get started, there's just so many ways to consume the content that you're looking for, mm -hmm. right? There's how-to how videos. Like, back in the days, we had a hard time trying to figure out how to do anything, right? Because we had to, like, look for an yeah. instructional manual. Or have a mentor. You had, like... Um, before social media, either you had a mentor or you had to go to a library, find a book, mm -hmm. you know, and before, not everybody had an online uh, computer. computers at home at the time in the 90s. Not everybody did. But, you know, to answer your question, it was like, that process is very integral, right? Yeah, like actually like doing the research and just consuming that content that you need to get yourself, you know. All, all, all my life, I've been into bookstores all the time. And even before they let you sit down and read books, because... That was new, like in the 90s, where you could actually go in there, open the book. But right. I would take my little index cards and go into the bookstore, <laughs> and I wanted to learn how to do something. I would take down notes if I couldn't buy the book. But, mm -hmm. I, but that's another thing. You know, I've got, I keep books all around me. I keep magazines all around me. I'm always looking at uh, biographies of successful people. I watch movies of profiles of successful people because I'm always curious. What did that person do? How did they think? What was the turning point? What challenges did they face? You also mentioned like the follow-up. How important is that? Like when you have a luxury brand, because I feel like I've come across some brands um, that I've purchased from, and they're not very good with a follow-up, and that kind of turns me off, and I never purchase from them again. So well, follow-up is, is, is the key to everything. Right. So everybody's going to, first of all, if you're building a business, everyone's going to say no, so you've got to follow up. Mm -hmm. If you are selling, the person initially is going to say, no, thank you. You've got to follow up. Mm -hmm. If the person buys, you, you should follow up because maybe there is a, another sale there. So I think learning how to follow up uh, is fundamental because often the money is in the follow-up. Right. Mm -hmm. And by following up, you, you don't realize that person said, you know, I'm so glad you called. I'm so glad you followed up. I was thinking about doing this. Right. So follow-up is really key, and it's something that a lot of people don't do. That's something that, like, 
in advertising, you typically see something like it's an average of six times before you actually mm -hmm. purchase. So in order to purchase, you have to show that user that product mm -hmm. at least six times before they even Absolutely. purchase that. So. And you do it through different platforms, right? Mm -hmm. Now they have AI tools that you can send out a text, a personal text, and then the AI, if you respond, the AI responds back to you uh, looking like if it was you, you know? So if they, it was to schedule a call or just to follow up, the AI responds in your in your tone, in your manner. So, so we in the future, you can, you can automate follow back. And But also the other issue is, look, I know automation is cool and important, mm -hmm. but everyone is not so busy that they can't follow up. Right. Now, I was That's traveling awesome. last week and I followed up with someone I'm talking to about doing some business and I just did something that I always do. I recorded a video about his opportunity specifically, talking to him, and I sent it to him. And he said, wow, I really like this. This is really cool, you, you, a video just for me. Well, that's the way I use my phone all the time. Right. Hey, look at this. And it's more personalized. Look at, look at this audio. Uh, sometimes when I'm coaching someone, rather than write things out in an email, I'll use my voicemail and say, here's what, you, here's what I think you should be doing. Or I've been thinking about this. And send them a voice memo. Use the tools that you have yes. right. in a powerful yeah. way. We've mm -hmm. got these tools. A lot of people don't even know how to use them or don't use them yes. to, to build that relationships and follow up. Right. That's 100%. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> now, where can people find you if they want to look you up and fi find your contacts? AndreTaylor.com, A-N-D-R-E-T-A-Y-L-O-R.com. You can find me on YouTube at The Andre Taylor. Between those two places, you'll be able to get to all the, the various things. Any Instagram, I TikTok? Yep, at, at The Andre Taylor. The Andre well. Taylor. Yeah. So just before we wrap up, Andre, what's one of the things that inspires you? Uh, I think the main thing that inspires, inspires me is the idea of tapping into my potential mm. and fulfilling my potential. I cannot sit too long without asking myself, am I using my time, am I using my skills, am I using this opportunity well? Mm -hmm. And so that has always inspired me. When I look around and I see other people doing interesting things and pushing the envelope, the question is, why not do that myself? Right. Why not learn from that? And mm -hmm. am I challenging myself? When I was growing up in Brooklyn and and back then, the New York was the capital of live television. And I would see these live programs on, talk shows, entertainment shows, or what mm -hmm. have you. My thought was, wow, I want to be there. I want to be, in, I want to be what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. And so that has always motivated me, the idea that there's something great happening all around the world, in all these spaces, and you can participate in it. Mm -hmm. If you are willing to step up and, and rise to a level of ambition and, and, and discipline and focus to do so, that's yeah. exciting to me every day. That's amazing. Yeah. Is there anything you want to highlight, any projects you got coming up that you want to mention on the show? Or we just keep it, we just keep it private and you got to reach out to Andre Taylor on his website, .com, right? I think the key thing that I would highlight is that if you are... Uh, someone who loves luxury or loves nice things and you want to figure out a way of, to play in that space, I've got a portfolio of offerings to help you do that. I've got my Luxury Lifestyle Advisor Program, which is being certified in my methodology on how to grow and market a business, and a wide array of other tools. Beautiful. So uh, get in contact with me. I'd love to hear about what you're doing, what you're thinking about doing. Even if you just love luxury, get in touch with me because I love to share these stories and understand how uh, I can better serve people both on the consumer side and business side. Beautiful. Amazing. Well, there you go, guys. We had Andre Taylor. We got formerly known as Hashtag. And Steve-O Business is another episode of The Innovators Then. Make sure you follow us on YouTube. Click that bell so you can get notifications. And uh, we're out. And we out. All right.